Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be reviewing the Ordinary Mandelic Acid 10% plus Hyaluronic Acid. So as I mentioned in my, not last vlog, but a recent vlog, I have been recently moving home and I haven't got all of my skincare products back. So some of my favorite exfoliating acids aren't with me right now and I really needed something for my skin. So I decided to pop to my nearest uh, The Ordinary counter and pick up an exfoliating acid. And when I was there, I noticed this, the Mandelic Acid, which I've never tried before. So I thought it was a good opportunity to try something different, learn about a new acid and then review it for you guys. So I did a little bit of research on mandelic acid which I actually knew nothing about. My most recent acid discovery was azelaic acid. I did actually a video on that where I called it azelaic acid throughout but it's quite a comprehensive uh, overview on what azelaic acid is all about so I'll link that up above but what mandelic acid is is it's an AHA that's an alpha hydroxy acid and it has the largest molecule out of all the alpha hydroxy acids and what that means is it's the gentlest and slowest to work on the skin. Now because of that this is a great acid for anyone that is new to using exfoliating acids and perhaps wants to start gently which is always a good idea or if you are perhaps intolerant or just have sensitive skin and can't get on with other acids then perhaps this could be a good option for you. Now I'm quite an experienced exfoliating acid user. I definitely prefer chemical exfoliators like this over physical exfoliators. A physical exfoliator is basically a kind of scrub that's got physical grains or granules in that literally just kind of rubs away the dead skin on the surface. Most of the time they are formulated well and they are safe to use on the skin, but some of them can be too harsh, so I just prefer to kind of avoid them completely because I use other active ingredients and I don't want anything that's going to sensitize my skin or damage it, so I always prefer to use a chemical exfoliator. Now I've mentioned before in my videos that I sometimes struggle to find space for an exfoliating acid in my routine. So the reason for that is that I like to use retinol or a retinoid in the evening and during the day I like to use vitamin C because that has lovely brightening effects on the skin but it also acts as an antioxidant which protects the skin against the sun and the pollution and living in London I definitely need that and it helps kind of boost your SPF. So with the retinol use at night and the vitamin C use during the day, I'm like, where am I going to put an exfoliating acid in? And especially as the winter's coming up and when that happens, I tend to use a stronger retinol at night. It means that my skin can sometimes be a little bit sensitive or a little bit delicate. So I have to be really, really careful what I exfoliate my skin with. Now this is where this one comes in and I think that it's a really good option for me because it will Will still exfoliate your skin. I definitely noticed the difference on my skin after using this. It looks plump, it looks smooth and it looks glowy. All of the things that I come to expect from using an exfoliating acid. In addition to the mandelic acid itself, this has also got hyaluronic acid in which is a really nice addition to have with any kind of skincare product really. Hyaluronic acid is like the backbone of skincare. It helps keep your skin hydrated. It's a humectant, so it takes water from the air and holds it within the skin. So now that we're kind of venturing into the winter months where you tend to have central heating on, I always recommend that you apply your hyaluronic acid to damp skin or products with hyaluronic acid in, apply them to damp skin. It's great if you've just come out of the shower and the bathroom is steamy because there's lots of moisture in the air whereas other rooms in the house where the central heating is on will perhaps be drier and there'll be less kind of moisture in the air for the hyaluronic acid to hold within the skin. So just always bear that in mind when using a hyaluronic acid product and then it's good to layer something on top to lock it in such as a moisturizer or a face oil. Another ingredient in addition to this is Tasmanian pepperberry. Now the ordinary use that in some of their other products I know that it's also in, I think it's called the 30% EHA, 2% BHA. It's the 
red, uh, very strong exfoliator that looks like blood. I know that they use uh, the Tasmanian pepperberry in that. And what that basically is in there to do is to alleviate any potential irritation on the skin. So with mandelic acid being a super gentle acid exfoliator compared to other ones such as glycolic acid, it seems like they've really marketed this to be for sensitive skin or people that are really new to using exfoliating acids. So as I mentioned before, I'm really enjoying using it a few nights a week in addition to my retinol use without worrying about my skin becoming kind of overly sensitized by using too many active ingredients in my routine. So this allows me to get those benefits of an exfoliator without it being too much, especially now I'm kind of deciding to amp up my retinol use. So I'm definitely using a lot more of the Drunk Elephant A Passioni. I have done a couple of reviews on that. I'll link one of them up above. I did an initial review and then I did another review after like four months, it was either four months or six months, I can't remember, of using the product. So if you want to know more about the Drunk Elephant Retinol, then uh, look out for that on the channel. In terms of texture, this has got a very kind of light, watery texture. It kind of reminds me at first of the Marine Hyaluronics, which I absolutely love because it is really, really light and watery. But what I will say about this is it is um has it does have like a slightly oily texture to it almost like the uh squalane um which i don't love that much it almost kind of feels like you think it's going to be watery and sink into the skin very fast but then it's actually a little bit oily and sits on the surface for a minute until your skin drinks it up so what I always like to do is apply my lighter serums first, something like an essence or some kind of toner or a very light hydrating serum. Basically anything that's water-based should go on before this. And then you apply this and then it's nice to kind of let it sit for a minute and then go over with some kind of moisturizer or oil, which I feel helps push it into the skin and take away that kind of like yeah, slightly oily residue that just kind of like sits on the surface. But as you can see, it's kind of like, you know, pretty lightweight, hasn't left anything too thick or heavy on my skin, and it doesn't kind of irritate or tingle my skin in any way whatsoever. I also wanted to go onto The Ordinary website and check out some of the reviews on there because anyone can leave a review on any of the products and it's always nice to know what other people are saying in addition to kind of my own personal thoughts. And obviously there were a few reviews where people said that it kind of made their skin break out or they had irritation, but that can happen with any type of product. Everyone's skin is different. Everyone's skin is tolerant, reacts well, reacts badly um, to all different types of products. So it really does depend on your own skin. And because of that, you should always kind of uh, proceed with caution. So even if you've been using something that's stronger in the past and you think, oh, well, that's no problem, always perhaps do a test patch, first of all. And to do that, you just have to apply a very, very small amount of the product to somewhere um, on your skin and then see if you have any kind of reaction before you go in and apply it to your entire face. As I continued looking through the reviews, a lot of people were saying that this was a really good acid for them because their skin is very, very sensitive. So that's something that I kept seeing coming up is that this is a good option for people with very, very sensitive skin. In addition, a lot of people were saying that their skin had become clearer after using this. Now, this is a very different acid to salicylic acid, which is a BHA, and that really can kind of like soak into the pores and unclog them. This won't necessarily Necessarily do that but something that I did see again and again is that people were saying that it was clearing up their skin so if perhaps you are using other ingredients within your skincare routine such as a retinol and then you can't necessarily tolerate salicylic acid or perhaps your skin just doesn't agree to salicylic acid and you're looking for something to target breakouts i'm not saying that this will work but you could definitely consider it for those types of skincare conditions all in all i really like this as an exfoliating acid it's nice to have a milder option that still works 
I love that it's got hyaluronic acid with it in addition, and I love that it's got the Tasmanian pepperberry to help kind of soothe the skin and alleviate any potential irritation. Just to recap, this is an AHA exfoliator. It's got the largest molecule, even larger than lactic acid. It's a good option for sensitive skin. It's a good option for anyone that is venturing into using a type of exfoliator and they haven't done before. It could be a good option for those with breakouts that can't necessarily tolerate salicylic acid. And like me, if you are using various different actives in your routine and you don't want to go in with a heavy duty exfoliator, but you do want something that is going to gently exfoliate your skin, then this could also be a good option for you. And don't forget, whenever you are using any type of exfoliator, it is always especially important to use an SPF during the day because an exfoliator will remove those kind of very surface layers of dead skin, making your skin that little bit more vulnerable to the kind of daylight that comes through. So even though you should be wearing an SPF every day anyway, it's especially important when using any type of exfoliator. I hope that you found this review useful. If you've tried this product yourself, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments. And if you would like me to review any other product from The Ordinary or any product in general, then let me know in the comments below and I will see what I can do. Thanks as always for watching. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and I will see you in the next one.